It's almost midnight here on a Monday night, and I'm on my way home, and I just felt compelled to share some thoughts because um, I was actually supposed to be home two hours ago, but uh, just I saw this young guy in the subway clearly with mental health issues and asking for help uh, in terms of money and you know I've I'm looking at him and you know just trying to make sure he's safe and clearly he's not okay and just trying to see if anyone can help him out and and as he was getting kicked out of the subway I just felt compelled to just follow him and make sure that he's he's okay. Um, and then this kind of led me to start roaming around. And I was just at the food court at College Park and seeing a lot of people sitting there. Clearly, they're going to hang out there all night. And I had a homeless guy named Abraham who wasn't actually even asking for anything, but... You know, turns out he's hungry, so just got him a bagel and, and coffee, nothing big. And he doesn't know me, so it's not like he was going to open up about his life. So he said thank you and I asked him, hey, do you, where are you going to stay? And he goes, well, I'm just going to hang out here. The guards let us just stay out. And, and it's clear, you know, he doesn't know me from a hole in the wall, so... He wasn't about to have a one-hour conversation with me. Then I decided after just looking around and seeing the scene, I wanted to go home and on my way up out the subway, <laughs> ran into a guy I know. I've known him a long time, and he's very happy to see me. See me, gives me a hug, and first thing he says, like, "EJ, get me that job. I'll do." Like I'm, I'm, I'm clean. I'll take a piss test. <laughs> I told him, you know how strange it is that that's the first thing you say to me. So I had a good laugh, and then you know someone else came up from behind me, a young lady that I've known has been gone through, has gone through just a lot of hard stuff, and you know she seemed really healthy. So I asked her if she's okay, and she's you know, well you know how it is, EJ. You know we're trying to survive on the street. Then I just, I just think the past two hours, I just decided to, you know, just allow the Lord and the Spirit to interrupt me and where I go. And I'm astonished at the, the journey that God opens when you just decide to say, you know what, I, I had this initial plan of just serving myself and doing something for myself, which is not evil. But then you open, yeah, you just say, all right, well... Maybe God has something in store in the past two hours. This guy's just seeing, allowing me to see broken people and people he loves and people God cares about. But then I realize a lot of these people have been roaming through the night. And I realize everyone else is trying to ignore them. And everyone's just trying to pretend they're not even there. So on my way home on the streetcar, that's when I realized that uh, people of faith should have an in innate sense to see the invisible people around us. And the only way we can see the invisible people is if, you know, God by His Spirit leads us. So, I'm not sure what to make of my night or conversations, you know. I, before I left, I, I got a nice big hug from this young man and said, Hey, you know, let's get together, let's chat. I said, yeah, of course, you know how to get old of me. So, I guess I just, I'm astonished. And kind of excited 
to see that God is at work, that, you know, when you open up your heart and say, well, all right, God, interrupt me. Show me what you want, what you want me to see. Lead me to the people you want me to speak to. Give me the heart to have compassion for, you know, even a small moment to someone I don't know. Just the past two hours, as much as I think I was ministering to others, God's been ministering to me. So those are my thoughts tonight, Monday night, downtown Toronto.